Welcome back to another shoe comparison video where we give you a summary of all the shoes and the lineup for a specific brand. We've done Hoka, we've done Saucony, we've done Asics, we've done Nike, and now it's the turn of Brooks. And we've got five of their best selling shoes here. And all of these shoes I bought 100% with my own money. So I can put them through their testing, tell you all the facts and figures about them, their uses, what they're good for, what they're not good for, and to help you with your buying decisions so you get the right shoes on your feet for the right type of run. And at the end of the video, I'll chat about which one of these shoes I've really fallen in love with a lot more than I thought I would. Right, we're gonna do this video in a price ascending order. We're gonna be finishing with the lovely Hyperion Elite Brooks's All Out Carbon Racer. But starting out with the cheapest shoe here, the Brooks Ghost 15. So the purpose of the Ghost 15, well it's a shoe you can do all sorts of different types of run, a classic daily option. It's a neutral shoe, very dependable, something a little bit like the Nike Pegasus for example. It's very traditional, simple, old school feel. It comes in around about 135 pounds, 140 US dollars or 150 euros. 35 mil stack at the back of the shoe and a 12 millimeter drop overall. A little bit on the high side as running shoes go these days. In terms of weight, this is coming in at 341 grams, around about 12 ounces for me in my UK size 12. Chatting about the midsole, well we've got a mid-level amount of cushioning here. It has Brooks's DNA Loft version two foam in the shoe. You can also get this Ghost 15 in the Ghost Max version as well, which has slightly more cushioning, but a little less drop at around about six millimeters. There's no plate in the shoe and it comes in four different widths. If you get the regular version, normal, narrow, wide, and extra wide. If you like the Max version, it just comes in normal or wide. It has this really nice, soft, breathable upper, supremely comfortable comfortable while I was out getting my training done. Super high quality feel to the shoe as well. It feels like it's really gonna last a long time. You're gonna be able to put a lot of miles in this shoe and it's just ultra dependable and absolute classic that just tweaked a little bit every single year from Brooks. What I didn't like, the ride is a little bit on the firm side for me. Very, very traditional old fashioned ride, but it did soften up a little bit over time as well. And if you get the regular version, that 12 mil drop does take a little bit of getting used to. But if you're a heel striker, mid foot striker, that's really gonna feel quite nice through the foot strike. So what type of person should buy the Ghost 15? Well, it's someone looking for an ultra comfortable neutral shoe to do it all, likes a little bit more of a traditional feel, Heel strikers will really like that little bit of extra drop, but it works for the midfoot strikers as well. Right, let's move on to the Adrenaline GTS 23. The Adrenaline GTS 23. If you wanna know what GTS stands for, go to support, because that's what the shoe is all about. It is your traditional supportive daily option. And like the Ghost 15, it does everything pretty well. An absolute classic daily workhorse option out there. Very, very comfortable, and it's also quite a good walking shoe option as well, if you like a little bit of extra support. In terms of price, around about 135 pounds, 140 US dollars or 150 euros. Stack height, 35 mil at the back of the shoe, 12 millimeter drop overall. For me, about 350 grams, just a little bit up on the Ghost 15 because of the supportive features this shoe has. In terms of the midsole, a lot of this is very similar to the Ghost. You've got that mid-level of cushioning there again. You have Brooks's guide rail, supportive system in the shoe, which is basically just two bits of foam that sit either side of the heel to keep your knee and ankle in line. And again, it has Brooks's DNA Loft version two foam in here. No plate in the shoe, wide option again, you've got four width options here, and I just had the regular version, which worked really well for me. So what I really liked about the shoe, again, super durable. This shoe is gonna last a very long time, and it's just a solid stability option without being too intrusive. It just gets on with the job in the background of supporting you. Super high quality, again, very consistent over the years. People that like the previous versions, they're gonna really like this minor tweaked update here in the shoe. In terms of what I didn't like, the high drop, just again, just takes a little bit of time to get used to. And also like the Ghost, which has the same foam in the shoe, the ride is a little bit unengaging to start with, but it does soften up over time. So who should buy a shoe like this? Well, someone who needs a stability shoe, someone who needs help with a little bit of overpronation or has some flat arches as they run or walk. And also someone that's just looking for a high quality shoe that will last a long time. Again, similar to the Ghost with that high drop, heel strikers and midfoot strikers are gonna enjoy this shoe particularly. Right, moving on to the Hyperion and the Hyperion Max. 
Whoa, this shoe is super light. We'll come on to that in my likes in a minute. So the Hyperion, I've got the Hyperion Max version here. The purpose of a shoe like this, for your longer runs, your tempos, your thresholds, your speed sessions, and races of all distances, really. Or so Brooks say, I might disagree with that in a minute. In terms of price, you're talking around about £160, $170, or around about €170. Euros. Stack height, 34 mil at the back of the shoe for the max, 25 on the regular version, and eight millimeter drop for both of the shoes overall. My max version here coming in around about 260 grams, Oh, so light, feels so nice when you run along with that lightweight shoe on the bottom of your feet. In terms of midsole, I've got the Max shoe here, so Max cushion midsole here. You've got Brooks's DNA flash foam here, really like this. There's no plate in this shoe. In terms of width options, no, just get your Brooks's standard medium width here. Now in terms of pros, what I really liked about the shoe, it just gets you up on your midfoot really, really nicely. Just turns underneath your center of mass really, really well. It's got a great rocker at the front of the shoe as well. Just encourages your feet to turn over, get your cadence up really nicely. It's got an engaging, snappy ride with that really good turn of speed. Good grip in the corners as well. Really like that. It's just that great mix of daily use with that speed as well, when you just want to make your runs a little bit of fun, pick up the pace a little bit towards the end of the run, or do some speed workouts. It's also super lightweight, and it's the same lightweight as the full Brooks's full-on Elite shoe, which will be coming on to next. Now, what I didn't like about the shoe, the cons, for me, it was really just not as fast as Brooks marketed it. I don't think it's an all-out speed shoe. There's no plate in this shoe, but yeah, super comfortable, and a really good, classic, fast, daily shoe option. So who should buy the Hyperion or the Hyperion Max? Well, if you're someone that's looking for a little bit more of a firmer ride, feeling a little bit more connected to the ground, then definitely get the standard Hyperion. But if you're someone like me that likes a bit more of a softer ride, then go for the Max. So it's really suited for someone looking for a speed session shoe, some tempos, some thresholds, racing, 5K, 10K, half marathon for the standard version. And you could definitely run a marathon in the Max version here. Someone that doesn't want a plate in their shoe as well. A really good fast one shoe option if you're looking for something like that. Right, moving up the price range to the Glycerin 21. Right, the all new Glycerin 21. The purpose of a shoe like this is for your easy recovery runs. Super soft, plush running. It's gonna look after your legs, whatever sort of mileage you're doing. In terms of price wise, starting out around about 165 pounds, 160 dollars or 180 euros. Stack height, you've got 28 mil at the back of the shoe, 10 millimeter drop overall, 337 grams. So a little bit on the heavier side, but as these type of shoes go, really not too bad. Now in terms of midsole, you've got a max cushion, the DNA Loft version three in this shoe. And you can also get this in the stability version, the GTS, the go-to support version as well, with those guide rails on the side of the shoe, if you're someone that wants a little bit more extra support. There's no plate in the shoe, and there's two different width options as well, the normal and wide. Now what I really liked about the shoe, the pros, it was super comfortable and lightweight. I would say lightweight for a type of shoe like this. It really didn't feel as heavy as it said it does on the scales. And I could easily wear this all day long, casually, a second run of the day for a recovery run as well, and just never take it off. Just super comfortable shoe. And it's also a decent chunk lighter than the outgoing model. And you will notice that, about 20 grams lighter as well. And you are gonna notice that if you particularly enjoyed version 20. The grip is great with the road tack. It is a little bit on the noisy side, but you really don't notice it too bad. Fantastic grip in the wet as well. And I really like the new updated DNA Loft version three foam. It just mixes with that outsole, just gives that little bit of extra support, that extra stability that this shoe needs. In terms of what I didn't like about this shoe, it's hard to criticize a shoe just for not being very good at pace, but it struggles at pace. It's not really designed to be going that fast. It's the type of shoe where you're gonna to need to add something else into your rotation. But if you're just looking for a really good, easy and recovery run shoe, then this will have you covered. Right, here we go. Brooks's fourth iteration of their all out carbon race shoe. The purpose of a shoe like this, for racing, 5K, 10K, half marathon, up to marathon maybe. Personally, I don't think I'd wanna do a marathon in this, but we'll come on to that a little bit later. But it's for race day, for your speed sessions and your race day option out there. 
In terms of price, £220, 250 dollars 250 euros. Stack height, maxed out at the back. 40 mil stack at the back of the shoe, eight millimeter drop overall, and super lightweight again, about 258 grams, 9.1 ounces. In terms of the midsole, again, max cushion midsole here. DNA Flash version two, really engaging foam to run with. It has a carbon plate running through the shoe, which Brooks called a Speed Vault Plus carbon plate. In terms of wide options, well, there isn't any. There's just the one here. Right, let's move on to my likes about the shoe. Fantastic upper, super breathable. You can really get a maximum amount of airflow into the shoe. I don't really know how any shoe could improve it, but really, really good. If you're someone that's racing hot environments, even warm environments, you, your feet are definitely not gonna overheat in this shoe. It's very, very lightweight, and you really do notice that as your feet are rotating underneath you, you really feel like it's working hard for you. It feels fast, at particularly fast at five and 10K paces. I'd personally rate this up to a half marathon. I really feel like I'd want a little bit more cushioning from the foam if I was gonna be taking it up to that marathon distance. So it's a little bit firm for marathon racing for me, but really good for those shorter distances. For an all out ratio, it was surprisingly comfortable. Not the most comfortable one I've ever worn, probably second behind the Nike Vaporfly. Yeah, surprising amount of comfort in a shoe that is so minimal. And then in terms of what I didn't like, well, I had some odd sizing issues. I had quite a lot of room at the front of the shoe. It didn't really matter. My feet didn't move around anymore. And then on the Brooks website, they say recommend go half a size up, which would have been crazy for me. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments. So yeah, sizing just a bit odd, but it didn't affect the shoe at all. And as I said to you earlier, I wouldn't want to race a marathon in this. I personally would like a little bit more of a softer foam in the shoe, but really good for those shorter distances. So who should be choosing a shoe like the Hyperion Elite or someone looking for that fast 5K to half marathon shoe? You like a bit more of a traditional firmer feel, albeit with quite a big stack height and a carbon plate running through the shoe as well and looking for that lightweight shoe package to go all out racing with. So that's my review of the Brooks range. If I could use one, one word to summarize the whole Brooks range, very comfortable, very dependable, very well made. That's quite a few words. Very well made and just, yeah, a really nice range of shoes here. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. What do you think about Brooks and what brand would you like me to review the whole range for next? If I had to pick a favorite one that surprised me the most here, it would be the Glycerin 21. I'm definitely gonna be keeping this shoe into my rotation for that second one of the day, that easy run shoe. So thanks very much for following along, guys. Please give it a like. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments. And coming up next is the ASICS version of this video up here and down there the hoka version we'll see you over there in a bit